What about belief? So, and, and immense failure. So take Roger Federer, take Michael Jordan. Federer almost quit pro tennis when he was a teenager because he, he, he had talent, but he just kept losing. He just, yep. he just, he just kept losing. He, almost, right. he literally almost quit. Wow. Michael Jordan yes. got famously rejected from his basketball team when he was in high school, right? Have you had experiences like that? And if so, how, have you seen other people? If so, how can one rekindle, rekindle Yes. That flame. Yes. And, and keep going. Yeah. I think belief is so important, you know, and you always have to have people around you as well that believe in you, right? Your support system is so crucial. My parents, my family, my wife, you know, all these people that when you have these negative thoughts, when you have these doubts, because they're constantly there, right? When you have setback, when you have accidents, when you have crashes. I mean, for me, um, I was trying to be number one in the world and, and, and it was becoming difficult. And I went to the Olympic Games in Athens in 2004. I was fifth in the world going in and, um, and uh, I, I ended up, ended up finishing the race. I finished ninth. I was top American at the Athens Games in 2004, but I was crushed because I came off the Sydney Olympics in 17th. I was happy to be there. I was 24 years old. It was our first Olympics. I, wasn't, I was the big fish in the small pond. I was the top American and I thought, oh, this is great. It's good enough. But then I wanted to be more, I wanted to be better. And that belief of wanting to get better and that pursuit of it, 28 years old, everyone is telling me I'm gonna win a medal. I, I've got all the t-shirts, the branding, I'm ready to win this medal. And the course wasn't necessarily suited for me, the Athens course. I finished ninth, again, top American, but I'm crushed. And, uh, and after the race and, and, and later on that year, it took some serious introspection for me, like looking within and thinking to myself, how, what can I really do to get better? What, what can I overcome and not be the best in the country, but really try to be the best in the world? And for me, my diet was a big thing. I mean, I would eat whatever I wanted to, whenever I wanted to. I mean, I was that kid that I say, I burned. That's what I did. I swam, I can run all day and therefore I can eat whatever I want. Well, I wasn't treating kind of what goes in, you get what you, you know, it's like an engine, your body is like an engine, right? So mm -hmm. what you're eating, what you're putting in yeah. is like fuel for that engine, right? Like yeah. a race car, like a finely tuned race car. And I wasn't thinking of it as my body like that, but I started to, in 2005, I started to uh, read some more nutritional materials, read about the timing, nutrition timing of actually when I was taking in protein within 30 minutes of my workout, right? So you just did a workout, a hard workout, a hard run, 10 mile workout on my running. And so within 30 minutes, if I'm putting in protein, I'm replenishing those muscles. They're feeling better. So it's not always about, it's that consistent training that you need. It's not that one huge workout a week. It's the fact that you can do three within the same sport every, every week, right? Three hard swim sessions, three hard bike sessions. Yeah. And so I, I changed my nutrition. I changed my diet completely around in 2005. I went from Krispy Kreme donuts and, and, and fast food to uh, much more um, health focused, health conscious than the timing of when I was eating lean proteins and that, and, um, and, and, and became number one in the world in 2005, 2006, the pet next two years. But it was the mindset of really wanting to be the best, overcoming the fact that I was ninth in the world, which most people would think, oh, you finished ninth in the games, that's great. But for someone that wants to be the best, that's not great. You, you wanna be number one in the world, what's that pursuit like? And so for the next two years I was, and uh, I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed that, that entire time between the 04 and 08 games. I have a couple things. Yes. Um, Andre Agassi, pro tennis player, when he was younger, he said that he had a diet of pizza and cheeseburgers. Yes. And he changed eventually. Yeah, also. Ab absolutely. And about not being complacent with your high rank of number nine, right? Wanting to do better and better. Um, I had a previous guest on my show called Dr. Garagoslu, and this part of the interview got cut off, but we talked about Ferraris. He's a Ferrari fan. Uh -huh. And the guy who started the Ferrari company who may have died at this point, he was asked, what is the best Ferrari you've made uh -huh. in your life? And he had, you know, many, many that you could choose from. He said, the best Ferrari is the one I'm making tomorrow. And I like the idea of things always getting better, mm -hmm. right? 